So, 2014. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, the way it sounds to me, it's like when you say we started in 2014, it, it's almost like you had prepared, like we're going to start a big YouTube channel doing this thing. Definitely not. That was definitely not what we were we were thinking at all. Okay. So, so it wasn't just you? No, no, no. It was my, my then fiance, no, well, my husband now, but mm. in those days we weren't engaged yet, I don't think. My boyfriend at the time. Mm. And he's a filmmaker and director. And we were always, we were both feeling very frustrated with the commercial side of our jobs and mm. that we were always waiting for the green light and, you know, n- not feeling fulfilled by commercial work. And the Suzelle project was really just us playing around. It was a side project. We just were having fun with this character who, who we thought could... I mean, we, I, I didn't really have very much ambition for the character. I think Ari would say that he did. But it really was just us messing around. Literally, we had a camera. We, we had this character. We are like, what can she do? Oh, she can do DIY. Yeah. We were sort of wanting to parody that um, the space of YouTube tutorials. Yeah. Because you meet the funniest people on YouTube. So yeah. you're like, I don't know, you'll do a Photoshop tutorial or you, how to do something on YouTube, but then you meet these weird and wonderful characters. And we thought, wouldn't it be cool if someone was like looking for how to do something, like Googling how to XYZ um, and find this weird, quirky South African character? And we were just playing with that and sort of exploring what that world looked like and the format and whatever. And we were releasing it online and putting it on YouTube, putting it on Facebook, I think. And I think for the first 10 episodes, we just we just sort of were wondering like where it would go. Mm-hmm. But, but it's funny to me because when a lot of people are starting off with YouTube, mm. they, they just start like, you know, mm. and then it transitioned to whatever it's exactly. going to be. And it's exactly. more like, especially when it comes to vlog, vlogging, it's supposed yeah, to be a yeah, little different yeah. what you're doing. But it seems like you had a plan, like, okay, we have a character. It, it seems more thought through than what people would expect from a YouTube channel. Totally. I mean, I think we wanted to stick to the format and mm-hmm. it obviously has evolved over the years. Um... But we never really had a, 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 a great plan for it. it. It all happened very organically, actually. And I think, mm. um, yeah, we didn't really we didn't really plan it. And then once it picked up, then we thought, oh, okay, cool, this format works. And that's when I think we started taking it a bit more seriously. And we were able to commercialize it mm-hmm. at that stage. Um, but in the beginning, it really, we, we, we did put thought into it. But we didn't put thought in where where we wanted it to go, if you know what I mean. Yeah. How long did it take you to reach to a point where you're like, okay, you know, this is not working? Or how long did it take? It was 10 episodes. 10 episodes. It was 10 episodes. Did you pre-recorded those? Or they were all pre-recorded. No, 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 no. I mean, I think we shot like one or two and we released them and then we shot another one. But I think by the 10th one, we were almost like, oh, should we carry on? Should we? Shouldn't we? Mm. And I'm really glad we did because it took that time to, you know, for the audience to take over and like that little bit of seeding and the audience grew very, in very small increments, but Mm. it did grow. And then by that 10th episode, someone saw it. It was a blog. Um, I I wish I could remember the name of the blog that posted it. Um, And it basically went viral for South African standards, which was amazing for us, you know. And that was like a South African audience, mostly? Yeah, it was a South African audience. Um, predominantly South African audience. It's a very South African character, obviously. Um, and people... The, what we had done, though, just to backtrack a bit, we had left our names off the project because we were hoping that people would think that Suzelle was a real person okay. and that she really was doing DIY. So that was also a bit of a social experiment <laughs> and like a social media experiment. And it did work because I think that added to the buzz around the character that it was kind of like, is this woman real? Mm-hmm. Is Suzelle real? I mean, you know what? Some people still think Suzelle is real. Okay. Which I feel a bit bad about, but then maybe it means that I'm doing a good job. Do, do you have to, 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 to act her out when you meet people sometimes? Because uh, they're expecting you to do yeah, it? Yeah, no, not really. I, w- I, won't, I won't. Unless I'm like dressed up as Suzelle and, and I'm in character, then I will be full. Okay. I'm very committed to the character. I don't really see that much of a difference, though. Really? Not much. 
No, she's so different. <laughs> except, except for the accent. Yes, the accent yeah. is different. But she also wears a lot of like crazy colors. Oh, no, no, when it, yeah, obviously yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the style is different. Yeah. But the personality is a, little, is a little similar. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I think maybe her personality has brought me out of my shell a bit, maybe. Right. Yeah. What was your shell? I think that I'm quite reserved and more of an introvert. I think the, those, the days that I knew you back in the day, you mm. were quite more reserved, I Yes, I think so days. too. I think I maybe am still, but maybe Suzelle's maybe a bit more confident. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so uh, acting wise, uh, how did, did that YouTube channel affected or improve your, your acting career? It definitely shifted it in many ways um, because I wasn't acting at all. I was kind of like, I had another career on the side. I was illustrating and um, designing and I was kind of done with acting. But then all of a sudden, all I was doing was was acting. Yeah. And I think a lot of ways it put me on the map. So people were like, oh, okay, cool. Um, it, it was weird because... You know what? It's it's tricky because she's such a strong and bold character that I think in a lot of ways I was pigeonholed into that sort of genre. All right. That that was all I could do. Like, Suzelle oh, was like right. my character and that's what I did and that was it. So I, I don't think that it helped me get any more roles, okay. but it definitely helped my acting. When okay. you're shooting all the time and you're scripting all the time and, you know, I'm, I'm in performance mode all the time, that really helps sharpen your acting tool you know mm -hmm. which is important and i think a lot of actors don't have the opportunity to do that because they're not working all the time mm. so for me it was a really amazing way to keep my craft alive if you know what i mean yeah so yeah. you also did you graphic design and yes you know, exactly fashion. you're exactly. very artistic eh? very artistic yeah how, how did that happen so i it was when i Left school, it was always a toss-up between doing fine art and theatre and like drama, but... Why, why not finance? Um, oh, no, not finance. Oh, why not finance? Yeah. It was just never my thing. But now, you know what? Now I wish that oh, I had it? that. Really? But, yeah. Because, I mean, not that I wish that I was doing finance, but mm. I wish that I had that skill. Okay, we'll come to that later. Okay, just, cool. uh, yeah. fine, fine, fine. I don't, I, yeah. Anyway, I'm okay. not in finance, I'm very creative, <laughs> I shoot videos, I draw, I illustrate, you know. I chose drama on a whim, I guess, and, but I loved it, I loved the experience. Mm. It was very challenging and it really pushed me and shaped me and I met amazing people. It's such an amazing degree to get, even if you aren't interested in that. Oh, is it? Absolutely. In what? In what? Uh -uh. I think that you learn a lot about yourself. I think you, um, you're you forced to go beyond your what you think your boundaries are. Um, it gives you amazing confidence and um, I guess you, you're, you're, think, you're thinking on a whole new level, mm -hmm. which is very interesting and I really enjoyed it. I suppose because you have to act, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And uh, you went to UCT? I did. Okay. I did. Very, mm -hmm. very Kryptonian of you. Very Kryptonian of me, except I grew up in Joburg. So ah, uh, for okay. me, it was kind of like you finish school in Joburg and then you flee the nest and and go to Cape Town go or, to Cape or somewhere Town. else. Exactly. Go to Cape Town. <laughs> my sister had done that, so I felt sort of safe in my choice to mm. to. So you you've been here that. for how long? I since two thousand and one. Oh wow. That's, that's, it. that's 18 that, years. That's 18 years. I know, the math that's doesn't so crazy. make sense. I feel so old sometimes when I think back. But <laughs> anyway, that's awesome. Okay, so how did this, I mean, we're going to get into how can one, for example, start their own YouTube channel. Okay. But then how did it end up becoming a huge operation where uh, I'm at your studio right now where you shoot the whole thing. Sure. I can see the DIY stuff <laughs> lying around here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically... It, we started very small. It grew very organically. In the beginning, we were just shooting in my apartment. We didn't have any lights. We didn't have any gear. We just had a camera. Mm. Did we have a tripod? I think we did. You know, well, my husband's a film director, so yeah. So we had like some gear, but nothing really. And then uh, once we got a lot of brands involved, once 
um, Suzelle sort of went viral. And at that stage, we were able to um, expand a little bit. And we moved into a new space, not this space, but a, a bit of a bigger space. And we got a producer in to help us because we were really struggling with managing all the admin side of things and shoots and um, we just needed a bit more help. And then, yeah, it's really grown over the years. It's quite amazing. Then we moved into this bigger space in Woodstock and we basically got someone helping us with social media. We have um, an art director who is freelance, but she helps us with shoots. Mm. Um, we have Ari, the director. We've got a producer. We have Josh who edits for us. So we have, we're have a real team now. Um, but it has grown very slowly and very organically. And it is quite a thing to run. We've, we've since launched Sketchbook Studios, which is our production company. So we produce yeah. Suzelle, but then we produce other content as well. Oh, okay. So this wasn't yeah. just built for Suzelle. No, not at all. So it existed before Suzelle, mm. the, the, the name Sketchbook Studios, which was my husband's company. Mm. Um, but then we decided that we should become a company um, that would help us produce Suzelle. And then... Um, since then, we've taken on other commercial work and we've made a TV show, we produce other content, um, we do all sorts of things, actually. So did, yeah. it, did, did, did Suzelle ever help you to get more business? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. definitely. We leverage off Suzelle all the time because I think Suzelle, it happened at a really good time mm -hmm. in like the world of South African YouTube. Okay. You know, I think, I mean... No one had really seen that before. It was kind of like a parody character that was comedy, but also DIY. And I think that people were really excited about it when it happened. And I think that that's what got a lot of brand involvement. Um, and from there, people were like, oh, okay, cool. Well, what else can you do? So, for example, um, we, we just done a TV show with Showmax. Um, and we, we shot a pilot and basically we just said, like, this is Suzelle's new project, you know, look at what Suzelle's doing now. And right. It really has opened a lot of doors for us. I think also people are interested to see what else Suzelle could do, do yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, it's been, it's been an absolutely incredible I think learning opportunity as This well. is what most people don't understand when it comes to content creation. Yeah. It's they, a lot of people like to ask about the monetization or how do you monetize? Exactly, right? exactly. They, they don't realize the leverage like to me i don't really have to make money from my podcast at all oh, okay. I, don't, I don't want to okay. right? yeah fine. <laughs> i just i just like to leverage from anything else outside totally. of that you know it's I'm already fine. more than enough yeah. yeah yeah so speaking of uh to your earlier point you said you wish you had learned uh at least finance totally. to, to a certain extent absolutely why, why do you say that because i think are we in a position now where we're running a company and there's so much that goes into that. And you mm. can really get quite snowed under. I mean, obviously you can, you get accountants and you get people on board and you can figure these things out. But I think that if you have those skills, it is just an added bonus. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, we don't, we don't do business science. We don't know anything about business, but then you, all of a sudden you've got employees and you're like paying P-A-Y-E and there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into it that can be quite intimidating. Um, but I mean, we, we survive. But do you we think survive. it's important for, for artists to actually, to some extent, learn just enough? Yes. Because I don't think, I, th I think yes. that that's a very big problem right now, mm. especially if you look at um, social media, for example, mm. right? You get people with so many followers that they yeah. can leverage their, their, you know, their social media, but they can't just simply because they don't really understand how they could move it. Totally. And also if it happens, they don't know how to strike a deal or how to exactly. do the finances. And, you know. Contract. It's so, there's so much that yeah. goes into it. And as a matter of fact, just before we launched Suzelle, my husband and I happened to do this, um, uh, this business course. It was called Business Acumen for Artists, mm. which is an incredible course. I don't know if they still run it. It's UCT Business School. And it was... I can't remember how long it was, but maybe, basically maybe it Suzelle was... Maybe could just run it. Maybe Suzelle should run it. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. But basically what it was, it was a, a bunch of artists, people in all different fields, illustrators, painters, jewelry designers, um, learning about business and learning about how to grow a business. And um, it was project-based. So by the end of the course, you had to have launched a project. It was brilliant. 
And that really gave us a lot of confidence um, in terms of starting a company. Mm-hmm. And it's, I still think back on that time and draw from those resources. Right. And um, what was your very first, oh, at least when you, when you started it, were you thinking of, okay, we're going to monetize this with YouTube money or... <laughs> yeah. Look, to be honest, I didn't know anything about that world. My husband did a bit. Yeah. But um, at the beginning, we really didn't know much about YouTube, how to make money off YouTube. Ari did to some extent, I think. Hmm. But we have learned so much more over the years. And um, monetizing your channel and um, optimizing your space on and, and all of that stuff, mm. like it's, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. And we don't even know all of it, you know what I mean? I think you can really dive deep into that. And it's always world. changing. All it the time, is right? always changing. The algorithms are, algorithms are always changing. <laughs> um, it's hard to actually stay on top of it. Yeah, it is. Um, but I mean, we've got the basics now and we kind of know what works and what doesn't work. Um, so my guess would be, would be that you make more revenue from your, from brand exactly, affiliations and exactly. stuff. Exactly. What was your first paycheck from from Suzia that you're like, oh, this is this is a thing now? So it was Take a Lot. Mm, um, okay. It was a big viral campaign for them, and they contacted us and said, "We love Suzia. Can't we want to do a series of episodes? We we don't. You can just do your thing. Basically, yeah. it wasn't like we had to put product placement in. It was amazing. It was it was such a great. Um, so what first was in, in, in it for them was that you can buy those products. Uh, at Take a lot. Exactly. Um, right. There were certain click-throughs. Um, it was kind of like um, at, at, at the end of the episode, it was sort of probably sponsored by Take a Lot, and there was a click-through to their site. And um, Suzelle had some sort of stuff on the Take a Lot page. It was at Christmas time. Uh, it was an integrated campaign, is what I'm integrated saying. Integrated campaign. Yeah, thank you. Gosh, I just could not think of that word. But it was an integrated campaign, and. What was so cool about that is that we were working with the agency who basically gave us creative freedom. And with that, we started making our own rules for working with brands. We we're like, okay, well, we, this isn't a commercial. We're not going to have the client at the Suzelle shoot telling us that Suzelle must wear a branded t shirt. Yes. You know, like we passed that now, mm-hmm. you know? So we sort of made these sort of mental notes for ourselves and ways that we wanted to work with brands so that we could stay authentic. And that the character stayed authentic, mm-hmm. um, and it's worked. I mean, so that was the first one, and and we've done quite a lot of branded um, stuff. And the cool thing about Suzelle is that she 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 will work well with a lot of brands. Okay. But there are some brands where we had to be like, oh, actually no, this doesn't work for the character. Okay, like and what, that's what one kind? of our you, rules. You don't have to say the brand, but what um, category? Like I don't know. She's a very conservative Afrikaans woman she's yeah. not gonna sell alcohol do you know what i mean like <laughs> that kind of thing or like deodorant you know she'd oh, like be yeah. a bit shy for that you oh know? yeah yeah sure. you know she's so, just like i mean yeah. she might i don't know but we, we she, do does she, does she even wear deodorant yes she definitely does but she probably makes it herself with like all her own inc- all little organic oh, yeah. ingredients absolutely but you know what i mean we, we we have to really think about the character we have to remain true to the character even after all these years we have these rules in place and it just helps us maintain mm. You know the world it has to be it has to feel true to the world and then you work with take a lot and a couple of other brands yeah we've worked the, the, i suppose all like in the m ranges yeah in the in the end in the ends in the millions oh in the m's oh no please i wish oh my gosh i wish we talk about that we were speaking about this last night actually is that people also have a very warped perception of how much money you can make that's with why YouTube I, that's why i brought this up because yeah. I mean, especially we're running a production company, you know, Mm. we've got our overheads are high. We really aren't making bucket loads of money. People think that we're just made of money and we're just, we're just struggling to stay afloat. But basically from YouTube, the the ad sales of YouTube, it's minimal. Unless Mm -hmm. you are having like tens of millions of views, you really aren't making any money from YouTube. So basically how it works is that you, um, YouTube sells ads that will either be a pre-roll mm. on your YouTube um, on your YouTube video, video yeah. um, and then you share that revenue with YouTube. And depending on how many views you get, you get a um, you get money. And I think it's about every three months that we see a bit of money, but it's a tiny bit of money. It's, yeah, of course. It's really it's really nothing to write home about. Um, 
but we do have different streams of revenue that we can draw upon, and that's um, so it's obviously the YouTube ad sales, which is a little bit. Mm. We do the branded episodes, which is probably the bulk of of money that Suzelle makes. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of that's a lot that goes into that. That's a production, and there's um, research and scripting, and um, you know, there's a lot of back and forth with that campaign. We work very closely mm-hmm. with the agencies and um, figure out how how they want Suzelle to work with their brand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so there's that. Then we I also do um, like live um, Suzelle performances, sort of uh, corporate corporate events, like so, MC. Exactly, or, exactly. Right. So Suzelle will go to a. I don't know, what am I, I'm doing one tomorrow, I'm doing an activation, um, we're doing a campaign with You Cook, which is a, yeah, yeah. Uh, when they deliver the food and you cook it at home, Yeah. so we're doing a campaign with them, so tomorrow I'm doing a media activation and I'll be cooking stuff and Suzelle's there and hosting the event, that kind of thing, and that's actually also a good um, um, stream of revenue for and the affiliates, character. Uh, affiliates is not a big thing here. What's affiliates? Affiliates, like affiliate links of like if you buy oh using. right yeah we don't do that oh, okay. we don't do that i think the challenge in south africa yeah. here is just that more most people don't really buy things online yet that's true because that's if true. they were like in america you, you know you would be killing it right totally now. totally yeah. yeah that's definitely it isn't big here yet i don't think mm-hmm. we haven't even touched on that yeah so if you i mean 2013, 2014, that's mm. when I, 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 you know, I came across your, your stuff. Mm. So when you were doing acting, those days you were much more into commercials, doing commercials exactly. and actress and stuff. Exactly. Car commercials, I think there was mm. some I could remember. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. the, coming from now a different side of the table where you, you are the product now, you own your own brand, mm. you can negotiate mm. what's, what happens and whatnot and the, the finances from being say, a, a tool on a, on a project mm. uh, when you're a, a, an actress or a model. Mm. What, what's the contrast and how do you differentiate the two now? You know, I think for me, I feel very lucky to have, be able to make my own things mm-hmm. and that, um, that I do have creative freedom. I think that that's... I, I feel so liberated in many ways, you yeah. know. I don't have to wait for someone to say, oh, okay, cool, yes, that looks all right, that's fine, it's, you know, fix it. It's like, let's do this the way we want to do it. And for me, that's been the most amazing thing. And mm-hmm. that I can, and that that can be my career. Yes. You know? Yeah. I'm not sitting at a casting, like, waiting for to, the director. Wanting to kill myself, <laughs> like, waiting for the director to be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and it's usually some some other person's opinion it's not really about the acting totally or and that's it blows my mind yeah. the commercial world can, can be so terrible look I've had a lot of fun in the commercial world, world yeah. and I've, we've shot some amazing ads and even with Suzelle we've shot some amazing ads but the, the process is just it blows my mind the amount of money that people spend on commercials mm. I mean I don't even know who watches commercials anymore <laughs> yeah that's for real right <laughs> anyway so it, it is an amazing um, space to be in and actually the, mo- the the coolest thing is that I get to choose now it's like well actually I don't want to do that project yeah, you know it's sure. like I don't that doesn't sit right with me or I don't feel like I have the capacity for that which is a really great position to be in or oh, the contracts that restricts you from saying oh if you work with us in the next five months exactly. you won't be able to do that exactly yeah that's yeah. horrible yeah. so how do you balance all this now being a mom too at the same time oh my gosh this is such a struggle oh so my my baby is 10 months old and that's still very small i mean she can't walk yet i'm still carrying this baby around physically course, and yeah. emotionally um but um it's tough it really is tough you know because being a mom time wise obviously you, you you split between t- two completely different worlds you also i feel like i'm a completely different person in many ways it's like i can't really get back to that old life i used to have or that old me so even trying to get there again is a, is a is what, a what, weird is, what struggle. is the what is the old you i don't know i, I guess I, I can't i can't really describe it it's 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 an emotion it's it's more of an emotional thing than anything you okay. know is and it a place it feels like a place maybe maybe 
like I don't know. It's just it's just everything is. It, my perspective has shifted in many ways. Okay. That's what it is. Wow. It's, it's my perspective has shifted in a huge way, and um, and that same thing about having to choose now. It's kind of like my priority is my child, right? Especially now when she's so small. So so there has been a big shift and. It's fine. It's fine because I know that I will always be able to get back into mm-hmm. acting and Suzelle. You know, luckily for us, we've we've created Suzelle. She exists. She's in the world. She's a brand. Like she's not going anywhere. And luckily. the good thing about, about like content is that look, you can be doing your thing, but st- people are still watching right now. Exactly. Exactly. So it always leaves. Yes, and you can keep reinventing it. You yeah. Know? Exactly. And that's what you should be doing mm-hmm. in in any case. So. It is. I'm, I'm evolving. I'm just sort of evolving into the new me and like how I exist in this new space that is work and motherhood. Um, it's tough, but I think it will get easier. Are you a cool mom? I'm the coolest. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh my God. I'm quite an anxious mom, I must say. Okay. Just because it's the first time I've had a child and, you know, you feel guilty about like not being at home and... Right. Um, but it's it's hard. It's very hard. You you it takes a lot of mental strength and physical strength and emotional strength mm-hmm. to be able to balance it all. And you sleep less, I suppose. Oh my gosh, the sleep is really hard. It's definitely improved, um, but it's tough. You know, it's tough. You 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 don't realize <laughs> you don't realize how hard. It also it's a cumulative. So like. I don't know, after like a week of not sleeping well, you're like, what is wrong with me? Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, yeah, remember, I'm absolutely exhausted. And you can never catch up. You right. don't catch a break. There's no there's no reprieve. That's oh, what's yeah, so hard you, about parenting. You don't get to a point where you're like, okay, now it's no. all. No, it's not like, oh, okay, tonight I'm going to work really hard, but tomorrow mm. I can just sleep all day. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> it's like, tomorrow you'll be up at six. Do, do, do you recommend the other girls there who want to have kids? Like, hey, go ahead and do it and have fun. You know what? I do. Of course I do. Like, the the reward is incredible. Okay. But I would say, like, really, if you can and you can afford to, I would wait. Okay. You know. You know, it's a toss-up. I don't know, because I feel like I'm old now. So what, what's, maybe, what's the best time to have a baby? I don't there, know. There's really none know. almost. Yeah. You know what? I, I was thinking about this the other day, and I, and I feel very lucky that I had achieved so much, mm. and then I was able to have a baby. Do you know right. what I mean? Yes. Because I, I think that if so I you had had a baby, like and a... I, 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 I worry that I would keep feeling like, oh, I still got to like do so right. much and like make right. it and whatever. I For me, I was like, okay, wow, I've really been incredibly successful. We've made all these amazing things. Wow. I feel really good about the mm-hmm. things that I've done. And now I'm going to actually take a bit of time off and, and have a So baby. that means you wouldn't see the baby as a hindrance to your exactly. whatever you want to do. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, not to say that people shouldn't just go for it because you can, it is possible. It really is. And yeah. it's awesome. I'm talking a lot like I'm, I'm telling, telling this as if it's the worst thing in the world and it's not. It's, it really is awesome. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so during the nine months of uh, pregnancy, did you do any videos at the time? Yes, we did so much. I don't even know how I managed, but we... Oh, so I saw some stuff, but I thought that you were, it was acting. No. Oh, what was it? What did you see? Uh, like a, a video, a mm. DIY video with you being pregnant, so I thought it was acting. Why not? I don't think you saw a DIY video of me being pregnant. At least I just looked pregnant and wasn't supposed to. Maybe. Uh, it was a video about, um, I think it was peeling something, I think. And I was pregnant? I think so. Was it in the vlog? Do you watch the vlog? Yeah. It might have been in the vlog. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So basically what happened is that when I was pregnant, I had to bank a whole lot of episodes so that I could basically take maternity leave. Oh, so you mean in that nine yes. months there was no video? No, 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 there were, there were videos. No, no, I mean we, of you recording while pregnant. Yes, yes, there was. Oh, but no. I didn't show it, like, Suzelle wasn't pregnant, if you oh, know what I mean. Like, okay. we, the, the character wasn't pregnant, so we had to hide it. <sighs> Sorry, that's the confusing part, is that we had to hide the pregnancy. Okay. Because it wouldn't make sense for Suzelle to be so pregnant. So how are you, how are you hiding it? We were shooting, like, like quite high. <laughs> it was very hard. Okay. It just, we were shooting from, like, just um, chest and up. And then the, the hardest thing was we actually shot a whole cookbook. 
Um, it was a book that j- was just launched at the end of last year. And we shot the whole cookbook and uh, I was pregnant. And it was very hard because mm. also when you're pregnant, you're exhausted and yeah, <laughs> like yeah, not yeah. a very happy person. But and on the, with the lights and stuff, you're like... It was hectic. It was yeah. so hectic. And funnily enough, Marianne, the actress who plays Marianne, yeah. she was also pregnant at the time and she was pregnant with twins. So we were just... Between oh. us, we were like... Did you plan this? Two, no, no, we didn't plan this. <laughs> we did not plan any of this. Um, so between us, we were just two very pregnant people struggling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Struggling yeah. Through it. But, it was, but it was fun. Right. Yeah. So uh, what do you see will be the future of this? Of Suzelle? Mm. You know, I, at the moment, we actually are scripting the Suzelle movie, which has been a, a dream of ours to make. Mm. Um, so a proper feature film which basically is like the origin story of Suzelle, kind of like a superhero movie, but not really. So mm. it's like the story of a small town girl living in Somerset West, trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life. It's a precursor to her YouTube mm. fame. Um, so that's been on the cards for a really long time. We've been in the scripting process now. And this is uh, off your off sketchbook? Yes, your, your yes. Production company. Exactly. So it's my husband and I, we are writing it with another writer who we work with often, we worked with on the TV show, Daniel Zimler, who's an absolutely, incredibly talented mm. TV writer and screenplay writer. Um, and we're hoping to shoot it um, in sort of mid to end of this year. Right. If we can get everything in place. Yeah. But making a movie is also incredibly challenging. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. yeah. And with the, what, what are, What's your favorite video that you ever, what, that Suzelle ever did? That is a really hard one. My, mine is the ironing one with the iron. Oh, really? With the aluminum, because I, I tried it once. It did it work? Yeah, it did. Amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, it was hard. I, this, this it, I think really it depends happy. on what fabric you're ironing. Yes, sure. Because mine was sure, quite hard. Sure, sure, sure. You know what? Okay, if, I, if we're going to go on like the one that I use all the time, hmm. it's the battery one. Did you ever see the one where she tests batteries to see if they're like dead or not? No. So basically, you take a battery and you drop it on a surface. And if it bounces, mm-hmm. you can throw it away. Sure. If it lands, it's like a dull thud. Mm. It's good. Right. And I use that all the, time. all the time. And also how to chop an onion. I, I, still, I still say it in Suzelle's voice. Every time I chop an onion. <laughs> uh, so it, it, do you have to look for things like, okay, what am I going to make now? Yes. Or you've always been the DIY, DIY person. Whereas I'm very DIY. Okay. And in the beginning, it was all my stuff. Like I was like, oh, we must do this, and this is my trick for getting mm. the fluff off the jersey or whatever. Like, um, but now obviously we've got a little team, and either we'll be like, okay, is there anything that's trending at the moment? Like, mm-hmm. what are people making in the DIY world? Yeah. So we'll often draw on that. Otherwise, if we're working with a brand or that will also obviously inform what we're going to make. Or maybe it's like a holiday, like it's Christmas or it's Mother's Day. And then we, mm-hmm. and then we that will determine the kind of thing that we want to do or make. Um, but often it's the really simple videos that do, mm. um, that do well. I'm sure, I'm sure you have uh, sharpened your brain a lot just by doing all these things. Now you know a lot mm. about how, pretty do. much how to do everything. I do. I do. <laughs> we know everything. There's something that I forget though, but I, I, I guess that we have learned a lot. Oh, you know what video you should do? What video? How, 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 to, how to send a Bitcoin. You see, <laughs> I would not know how to do that. That would be a DIY, a DIY video. Yeah, I bet you people would probably watch it. They right? would, yeah. How to make a, how to make a, your own Bitcoin wallet and receive Bitcoins. I think that we should do that. Because I genuinely want to know how to do that. You should, because, and you put a, a link, a Luno link, which yeah. is the app that we use to buy it. Okay. And when people watch it, you 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 get 25 bucks per sign up. Really? And it's a lot of people. I've made thousands with it, so I'm just saying. Really? <laughs> yeah, that would be so cool. Yeah, I can help you. You, you have to just give me the name of that thing, and I want to know. 100%. This is brilliant. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it's, it's. And it would brilliant. actually be really comedic. It would. If you want, if you want to take it further, you can actually speak to the guys there and really? make a partnership. Yeah, yeah sure. maybe I should. Yeah, uh, I okay. can give you a part, uh, contact with them. I can That'd just introduce you to to the guys there. Okay, great. Yeah, Suzelle does Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> DIY Bitcoin. Uh, I need to stop 
selling Bitcoin to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep selling. Okay. <laughs> um, we always wanted to do another character, mm. which was quite scary for me because I, because Cizelle is so loved. Yeah. I was worried that people were going to, there was a lot of pressure on me basically to succeed. You know, yeah. you're, you, when you have a, a project that's successful, people are always waiting to see how successful your next project is going to be. Yes. Luckily, it was successful. Um, and I always wanted to do a new character and this character just came quite naturally to me and she's kind of a very spoilt, not that I'm very spoilt at all, at all. I'm nothing like, I'm nothing like that other character, but um, yeah, it was a mockumentary style, which was a new style for us. Um, it followed this very spoilt Joburg princess mm. um, on, on, along, on, along, on her journey <laughs> to getting married. Yeah. And yeah, it was a really, it was a really cool project. And um, sh we obviously leveraged off Cezelle. We were like, this is Cezelle's new project. And do you want to get involved? And blah, blah, blah. And Showmax came on board. And they also gave us a lot of creative freedom. Mm. And we were able to make a TV show, which is also hugely different to making a YouTube series. Um, obviously, there's a lot more production involved. But it was hard. But very rewarding, and yeah. um, we learned a lot from that. And that's process. already on Showmax. Right? It's on Showmax. For those who want to watch it, what's it's, the title? It's called Tully's Wedding Diary. It's a mockumentary. Well, um, what is a mockumentary? So a mockumentary um, is like it has a format of a documentary, but it's a parody, so it's comedy. So hmm. um, an, an American, um, The Office. The Office, which is British and American. Right. There's, there's The Office. Um, what's that one? Modern Family. That's also mockumentary style. Oh, okay. You know when they like follow the family and then they have like an interview, yeah. like talking head scenario. Yes, um, yes, yes. So basically, it feels like a documentary, but it, it's it's set. It's a setup. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, and that's hard. It is hard, yeah. and it's quite a it's quite an interesting style to shoot in because you're kind of blurring the line between reality and, but you're still acting. It's it is it was very hard. Mm. But very fun, and like a, a, a new way of approaching comedy, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, you like comedy, eh? Love it. Yeah, I think that might be my niche. Right, maybe that's <laughs> going to be the next the next thing. You never know. But a stand up. Oh, have you done stand up no. at all? <laughs> no, I haven't, and I think I'd be terrified. I'm, I'm terrified of stand up. I don't think I'll ever get. Is it? What What do you think most people know you of? Like people close to you. I think that I am quite a comedian. Okay. So do people they know you people will say me. that you've yeah, yeah, funny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're definitely... Oh, I've always been a bit of a clown, I think. Okay. But it, funnily enough, it took me my whole career, well, up until 2014, to realize yeah. that that was actually what I was good at. Right. I was agonizing over all these other things. And then suddenly, with Suzelle, it just sort of clicked into place. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Hmm. I can do comedy. But what, what do you think it was um, before... 2014 that you thought you were good at or what you were trying aspiring to you know i i really don't know i think i was trying to be like a um i had this notion of what a real actress is <laughs> is it the hollywood thing not not so much hollywood it was more like you know i need to like do classics and i need to know how to do shakespeare oh. and i know how to like <laughs> really like go deep and that's not to say I don't enjoy that. Because right. I do. I really do. And I, but and I, you sound like the, the, every other actress out exactly, there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I really had this, this, this thing in my mind that it had to be so serious. And, you know, and I think as soon as I let it go, that's when I became successful. That, right. which is amazing to me. And actually, that's, I think that's a cool message that you maybe don't have to take yourself so seriously all the time. Mm -hmm. And that... You need to find the lightness and ease of things in order to make them work. I don't know. I don't know if that's a bit philosophical, but I, I that, that's what yeah, happened, that's what that's what happened you. for me. You know, yeah. like I was agonizing and agonizing until I was like, okay, you know what? I'm letting this go, and I'm just going to do what feels right for me, and that is when. Yeah. So, from the content change. point of view, if some, I, I don't know how to do what you do mm. what you did of like really planning the whole thing up and like really doing it i'm not my brain doesn't work like that okay okay but for someone who want to start his uh their own youtube channel right now cool how how would you if you had to do this again how would you do it now so from I think, scratch one okay by one. i think 
the best way to start a YouTube channel is to just start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that's, yeah, that's how, that's the way you need to do it because you have to approach it in a way that it's like, you have to just consistently keep trying and keep going and keep making your content. And with that, with each episode you release, you will be a little bit better. You'll yeah. get better and better with everything you release and your audience will grow a tiny bit more. Yeah. So you just, I, I, I think, I think just start and, and I, I mean, obviously have an idea and try and stick to a format and just by releasing regularly and like by keeping at it, that is, that is how you grow an audience and that's how you get better at what you're doing. Like by your 10th episode, you'll see such an improvement in, in what you're making mm. and use it as a way to practice and experiment. I think that that's a brilliant idea. Also to use the other social platforms. So for example, Instagram, um, we, we use Instagram a lot. I, I did, especially for the TV show, I was just shooting little content pieces, little 15 second to 30 second videos of this character just for myself mm. to get better at the character, to like just dive deeper into her world. It was an exercise for myself, but in so doing, the audience for that Instagram channel grew like... It was, it, was, it was amazing. I, cu I couldn't believe it. And now there's, a, there's an amazing um, Instagram following on top of everything else. So I think it is good to spread yourself across the different platforms if you are able. What's more impressive to me is that you have managed to create a brand, a personal brand, yeah. that's still detached from you. Yes. You know, so it's like they're two different... Totally. To to totally two different people. Totally. Because, you know, having to be you, the person that mm. people perceive you are, mm. can be a little hard. It's just like being famous is hard. Right? It is. It I is. suppose. It really is. And, and you're right. It, it is interesting to have the different personas mm -hmm. because it also means that I can keep to myself a little bit more. Yes. Um, and that's great. So you can be both. Like, hey, yeah. every day you can be Anna and whenever you have to act, exactly. it's time for acting. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um, have you watched the Avengers last week? I haven't, but my husband did. Why not? Why you didn't? Well, because I have to stay home with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but you know what? To be honest, I am not the biggest Avengers fan. You're the classic style, I suppose. Yes. So, but but the, Ari has been talking about it for weeks, and okay. Obviously, I was just going to say go. He went with his two friends, who are also huge Avengers fans, and he wasn't disappointed. And he wasn't disappointed. No, no, okay. he wasn't disappointed. He loved it. Were you disappointed? Not really disappointed, but it's just like it's the end. But it's just it's still the way it ended. It's still chaotic for me. Oh, is it? Yeah, I don't know how to. Is feel. it the end? Is that the end of the franchise? Pretty much. Yeah, uh, and I don't know how to feel about how it ended. Oh you know? damn! Okay, it's, it's that kind of thing. But I think it's I don't know if you realize this. There's a trend right now in film film making. Yeah. Where it's breaking the trend of. The last way of making movies, whereas at the end it's a happy glory, happy days. You're right. You know, it's, I don't. I never You're watched right. Game of Thrones, but I heard they kill pretty much everyone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that is becoming more popular now that you you be disappointed at the end of a movie. I know you are actually <laughs> right, or maybe it's so that they can do make a sequel. Probably. Oh, I think they like just, leave you hanging, and then they're like, okay, well, here's the next one. Maybe yeah, one. maybe. At the same time, I think it's just like trying to do something different. Because, you know, the movies are always like, okay, you struggle at the beginning and then you That's win the last true. part, right? I mean, I think, the f like, if you think about it, people are watching TV now. People are watching TV shows yes. way more than they're watching films, mm. TV shows, and content. YouTube a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe the movies are trying to, like, I don't know. Catch up to that. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's actually a good point. I don't know. You guys figure it out. I don't know. You're into the business. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> Okay, cool. Thanks for, for your time. Oh, I don't wanna thank you. It was really cool. Enough. It was really cool to chat.